Codependents will just go and go, destroy their health, emotionally, physically, because I've got to help you. What the codependent is really doing is working so hard to get that approval that it becomes more important than their health. Gospel teachings are based on gospel doctrine. Seems pretty obvious. But codependency teachings are based on member teachings. And I won't go into that now except to refer you to the book Stress Reduction for Mormons and the audio tape which talk in detail about member teachings. All I want to say here is that there's gospel teachings that are always true and always accurate like the atonement. There's member teachings that are sometimes true and oftentimes false. They're created by members. And I just want you to know for the purposes of this talk right now, tonight, brothers and sisters, that codependency and the fostering of it are member teachings, not gospel teachings. The gospel teaches us to help others to be more reliant on Christ. 2 Nephi 25:23. By the grace of Christ, we are saved after all we can do. But codependent teaches us to help others to be more reliant on another person, or even relying on themselves to the point of pride. David McKay says, self-reliance is a virtue, but with it should come the realization of the need for a higher power. So that's gospel teaching. Codependent teaching, how a leader, for instance, may give in to what a member wants, even when it's not for their own good, because you need the person to like you. The gospel teaches a member gospel doctrine and to love and lean on Jesus Christ. Section 19. Learn of me and listen to my words. Walk in the meekness of my spirit and you shall have peace in me. But codependency teaches a person to lean on and be impressed with the wisdom or personality of the leader, the teacher. So it's a total different approach. Well, the missionary may teach the person to love the missionary without even knowing it. There's a codependent relationship form, and we've all heard it, so when the missionary leaves, the person may go inactive. Why? Because they're committed to the missionary. They love the missionary. That's fine to love the missionary, but the missionary needs to teach the person to look beyond their personality and love Jesus Christ. Moroni chapter 10, if you go to the end of the Book of Mormon, in the last few verses, it is just perfect for what the gospel teaches. Moroni chapter 10, verse 32. Yea, come unto Christ and be perfected in him, and deny yourselves of all ungodliness. And if ye shall deny yourselves of all ungodliness and love God with all your might, mind, and strength, then is his grace sufficient for you, that by his grace ye may be perfect in Christ. And if by the grace of God ye are perfect in Christ, ye can in no wise deny the power of God. And again, if ye by the grace of God are perfect in Christ and deny not his power, then are ye sanctified in Christ by the grace of God through the shedding of the blood of Christ, which is in the covenant of the Father unto the remission of sins, that ye become holy without spots. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. A gospel teacher loves his or her students, as the gospel teaches, with a Christ-like love, teaching them gospel doctrine and to place their faith in Christ. But the codependent teacher works hard to teach students, extremely hard folks, to be successful so he or she can feel successful. They want them to stay active in the church so that you don't fail. This person may, may express much love, but what the students feel is different than that love. The students feel something different because it's diluted by codependency. We had some orange juice yesterday that had about four times too much water in it. You ever tasted it like that? Well, it kind of tastes like orange juice, but it's so yucky you'd rather have plain water. And that's a little bit what codependency is like. It's so watered down that there's still a touch of the gospel there, but uh, you'd rather have water. Well, the gospel teaches us that we must live worthy to have the Spirit. While a codependent may be living worthily, and many are, but it's not necessary to be worthy to be a codependent. In fact, codependency does not provide a healing 
or a sanctifying influence in a person's life. It is unable to do that. But the gospel of Jesus Christ teaches us that as we follow the Spirit and serve through the Spirit, we can then provide a healing and sanctifying influence in the person's life. Doctrine and Covenants 20, verse 31, that we're sanctified through grace. Now, the gospel teaches us that gospel service provides an ability to deeply love a person even when he sins or fails. In other words, you learn how to separate the person from the behavior. You can love the person and hate the behavior. But the gospel teaches us that the Lord does this to us, doesn't he? He loves you, loves me, no matter what mistakes we make. And he loves all of us. And, it, and the behavior doesn't determine it. Now, the behavior determines consequences, but it doesn't determine love. But for the codependent, they may resent those who do not succeed and judge them harshly if they fail. They may still verbalize that love, but they come across in an incongruent way, which may or may not be detected by the person. So sometimes a person will say things like, I don't know, he confuses me because they're getting double messages. The messages are, I'm supposed to say I love you because I teach you and because I'm your, your priesthood leader or whatever, but I don't feel it. And so you get a double message from people. Learning more about a person's problems in the gospel leads to understanding and needed inspiration to help the person. The more you learn about them, the more the Lord helps you to help them, the more you love them. But what if what you're learning is negative? Well, under codependency, you learn more about a person's problems and you get confused, you have more anxiety, you become more judgmental, and you develop attitudes that cause you to judge the person and to put, separate you from them. So they feel more distant than, than rather than they accept it and loved. The gospel teaches us to help others with a spirit that leads to change lives. People get close to Christ in his teaching. Codependency, helping others as a codependent leads, would you believe it, to anxiety, to frustration, for both the giver and the receiver, so people move away from Christ and his teachings. The gospel teaches us to understand the difference between a sin and a weakness, and we'll talk about this more under solutions. The codependent teaches a person that weaknesses and sins are the same thing. The gospel of Jesus Christ doesn't enable us doesn't rescue us from the consequences of our behavior, but codependence enable all the time. We've defined that already. The gospel of Jesus Christ, a person is aware of his or her own behaviors, but the codependent will tend to have a lot of denial about their behaviors, especially when they're pointed out. And so, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the person isn't easily manipulated by other people. So you might try to manipulate me, but I care too much about me or I care too much about you to allow you to do that. But the codependent is a whole different ballgame. I need you so much, see, that you can now easily manipulate me and I may even know you're doing it and still allow you to do it as a codependent. The gospel of Jesus Christ person is a peacemaker yet deals with inevitable conflicts that come into all of our lives person living the gospel will learn how to deal with inevitable conflicts that come, but that person will deal with those in a Christ-like way. Uh, the person on codependency just can't stand conflict. They have to avoid it. Conflict, see, becomes bad. Conflict means I'm bad. So if I have a conflict, then that means I'm a bad person to the codependent, because remember, performance equals worth. Con Conflict is bad, therefore, if I have conflict, I'm not performing well, and you can see how that fits in there. And so, one of the most important things, for instance, about codependency, as we look at it, is the difference between what we allow people to do to us. For instance, the gospel teaches us not to allow another person to abuse us, but a codependent will not only allow a person to abuse her, for instance, but she will believe it when she's told she causes his abusive behavior. She'll believe it when she's told that she causes him to drink. 